Last class, we did graphing a line using your slope-intercept method. So that was stating what your m is, stating what your b is, and then graphing your line from there. Today, we're going to learn how to graph a line using a table of values. And there are two ways to get your table of values that I'm going to go through. But first off, you need a minimum of three points to make your line accurate. So you need to make sure you have at least three points. If you have more than three points, that's just going to make your line more accurate, which, yay, more accuracy is better, but you need at least three. When graphing your line, you still need to put it in slope-intercept form first. So we still need to be have it in y equals mx plus b form. So if you're going to do it by hand, what you have to do is first step, you have to plug given values into the equation. So you pick values for x. I always like to use negative 1, 0, and 1. You plug those in and get your y values. And when you have your graphing calculator, it's a little easier. We go to our y equals button. And we type it in that way. So that's what we're going to actually do. We're going to practice a couple of these using our graphing calculator. So our first one, we first have to get this into y equals mx plus b form. So in order to do that, I need to add my x over to the other side of the equal sign so that my y is on its own. So I get y equals x plus 4. So once we have our equation in y equals mx plus b form, we're going to go to our calculator. We are going to go to the y equals button up there in the top left. Now I have stuff in there, so I'm going to hit clear, and I'm going to get rid of the stuff that's up in there. So now we're just going to type in our equation. We have y equals, and then it's x plus 4. Calculator already has the y equals for us. We just need to type in the x plus 4. Whenever you type in x, you're always going to use this button right here. It says x comma t comma theta comma n. That's the button we use for x. Don't ever use the green x because a lot of times it has a number stored into where it doesn't always work. This is the button we need to use. So then x plus 4. So everybody got it? So now you push graph. And there's our line, y equals x plus 4. All right, let's take a look, see why it says error. Because you have a whole bunch of other stuff in there and your stat plot is turned on. So now... You see how above the graph button it says the word table in blue? That means to look at our table of values, we have to push the blue second button. And then if we push graph, we get our table of values. Whoa. Now, if you notice, my table of values, I'm up here in 19, 18, 20, 22. That's pretty high numbers. So if I just arrow up, it'll get me to the smaller ones. So you can move up and down the table wherever you need to be. Yeah, it does. So this graph will keep going, but looking at my y column here, I have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I needed to graph those on my own, I could. I would actually be able to plot those points, so that would be a good table for me to use. I just moved up and down my table. So sometimes they want you to sketch the picture. So if we sketched a picture, that would be our line, y equals x plus 4. Just a quick little sketch of it. Yes, ma'am? So now they want to know what's going to happen if we change the slope of our line to a 3. What's our slope of this line currently? Our slope currently is a 1. They want us to change it to a 3. So in my calculator, I'm going to go to back to y equals. I'm going to leave my x plus 4 in there. And under y2, I'm going to type in 3x plus 4. 
So I've now changed my slope to a 3. So if you have a color screen, your lines are going to show up as two different colors, which is awesome. If you do not have a color screen, you want to arrow over so that your little blinky guy is in front of your y equals. So let's have you guys go over here. Arrow over so that your little blinky guy there is in front of y equals. Are we there? So the thinner line here, that was our y equals x plus 4. Here's our thicker line. That's our 3x plus 4. What happened to our line? They cross each other, but what happened to it? It went from being this way to coming like this. Increased. What's another word we could use? It begins with an S. The line became steeper. Because as I told you last class, your slope, which we also call your average rate of change, that changes the steepness of your line. So when I went from a slope of 1 to a slope of 3, my line became steeper. If your slope gets larger, your line becomes steeper. So the other thing we say here is your rate of change increased. Because your line became steeper, that means your rate of change increased, which we already knew because our slope went from a 1 to a 3. All right, so now we're going to change to a slope of 1 fourth. So going back to our calculator, go back to our y equals. I'm leaving our original, x plus 4. So down here, we're going to change our y2 equation. We need to make it 1 fourth x plus 4. Now, there's a way that I want you to do your fractions that's going to help us with something later on in the school year. You need to push alpha y equals, and this little chart pops up. And that first one is our fraction. Alpha y equals. You don't have the alpha key on the Casio. I don't know where it is on that. Hmm? Yeah, but I don't know where the fraction is on that cal calculator. And then you type in your 1 fourth x plus 4. So now if we take a look at our graph, we have our x plus 4 here, and then here's our 1 fourth x plus 4. So our line went from here to here. So what happened to it? Decreased. Decreased. It became less steep. So we will say the line became less steep, the rate of change decreased. Again, we know it decreased already because the slope went from a 1 to a 1 fourth, so it came, became smaller. So now our last one, we're going to see what happens when we change from a slope of 1 to a slope of negative 1. So we'll go back to our calculator, go to our y equals, leave our first one in there, our x plus 4. Our second one we're now going to write as negative x plus 4. So x plus 4 in our y1, negative x plus 4 in our y2. And then we'll look at our graph. So what happened to this time? <laughs> it did not decrease. It flipped. Our line was going this way, and then it reflected over your y-axis, and it's now going the other way, because that's the way it's supposed to look. So what happens if we change the slope to a negative 1? The line reflects over the y-axis. 
Now, as far as the rate of change goes, the rate of change stays the same. Our original line with our slope of 1, it changes by 1. That means it goes up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. With our slope of negative, it goes down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. So the negative just tells us the direction. It's still changing by the same amount. It's still changing by 1 over 1. So even though it's negative, your rate of change itself is the same. It changes by the same amount. It's just going in a different direction. So when we talk about rate of change, positive, negative, doesn't matter. You're just comparing the numbers. Does that make sense to you guys? All right, let's try another one. Number two, let's get this one into y equals form first. So what do I have to move first in problem number two here? The 3x. So I'm going to subtract 3x. So I get 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. And then what do I do? Divide by 2. If I were to divide 3 by 2, I would get a decimal, but I don't want a decimal right now, so I'm going to leave it as negative 3 over 2x. And then 6 divided by 2 gives us a 3. So let's go ahead, go back to our calculator, and type this into our y1. So clear out the stuff from the other problem. We're going to hit negative alpha y equals 3 over 2x plus 3. I got my negative, yeah. So then if we look back at our paper, they want us to change the y-intercept to 8. So in our y2, we're going to still have our negative 3 halves, x. They want us to change the y-intercept to an 8, though. So I would put it as plus 8 as opposed to plus 3. Does anybody think they can predict what's going to happen? Hmm? It's going to make it move, yeah. So if we look at our graph, there's our first one. There's our second one with our y-intercept of 8. So here's our y-intercept of 3. Here's our y-intercept of 8. So what did it do when we changed our y-intercept? Make them parallel, but it just moved your graph up, didn't it? So what would happen if we change our y-intercept to 8? It moves the graph. Up. Does anybody know how far up it moved it? Five units. I heard somebody say it. Made the, move gra the graph move up five units. So then they want to know what would happen if we changed the y-intercept to negative a half. So let's go put that in there. We're going to go back to our y2. I'm going to take out my plus 8 and make it minus a half. So negative 3 halves x minus 1 half. So when we look at the graph, there's our original, there's our other one. So what, which way did it move it this time? Moved it down. So it moves the graph down. Does anybody know how far down it went? If our y-intercept was at 3, then we moved it down to negative 1 half, 
How far down did it move? Three and a half, three point five units. So our slope, that changes the steepness or the direction, y-intercept, that moves it up and down the graph. So our next page, this is a third way for you to graph your lines. It's using your x and y-intercepts. We're going to get into some applications in a couple of days as to when your x and y intercepts are the best way to graph your lines. But for now, we're just going to practice the skill of how to find them and then how to graph using them. So to find your x-intercept, you plug in a 0 for y, and then you solve for your x. When you are finding your x and y intercept, you do not need to rearrange the equation to be in y equals form. You can leave it as is. So again, for our x-intercept, we're going to plug a 0 in for y. So from my original equation, I get 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. So what happens when I do 4 times 0? Zero? 0. So really, I'm left with 3x equals 12. Divide by 3, what is our x-intercept? x-intercept is 4, so x equals 4. So that means on my x-axis, I'm going to start at the origin, count over 4, and put my x-intercept there. So now we need to find our y-intercept. So for our y-intercept, we plug the 0 in for which letter? x. So it would be 3 times 0 plus 4y equals a 12. So 3 times 0 gives us 0. So really we're left with 4y equals 12. Yep, so we divide by 4. And we get y equals 3. So again, we started our origin, count up 3. Have our y-intercept. Then using a ruler or some other kind of straight edge. You connect your two intercepts. And you write your equation on your line, 3x plus 4y equals 12. You always need to label your lines. So let's have you try the second one. Find your x-intercept, find your y-intercept, and then graph your line using those two points. You guys get a y-intercept of 6. So then you got a beautiful negative sloping line with your equation written on it. So our last thing for today are our special case lines, our vertical lines and our horizontal lines. So these are two lines that are slightly different from the typical start line that we've been doing, or slant line. These lines are horizontal, which is parallel to your x-axis, and vertical, which is parallel to your y. So let's write that on here. This is parallel to x-axis. This one is parallel to y-axis. So with our horizontal lines, you guys remember this yesterday, horizontal line slope is 0. And with our horizontal lines, those are always y equals a number. So y equals 3 is a horizontal line. y equals negative 10 is a horizontal line. 
there is no x in your horizontal lines. It's just purely a y. For your vertical lines, your slope is undefined. And it's going to be x equals a number. There's absolutely no y anywhere in your vertical line equation. It's just purely x equals a number. So x equals 5, x equals negative 20. So when you're going to graph these lines, there's really not a lot of work for you to show. You just have to identify what kind of line is it, horizontal or vertical, and then you go ahead and you graph it. Over here, y equals 3 is graphed right there for you. They want us to graph and label y equals 2. I'm sorry, y equals 5 and y equals negative 2. So y equals 5 would be up here at 5 on your y-axis. It's y equals 5 because it goes through 5 on your y-axis. That's how you know where it is. y equals negative 2 would be where? going to be below our x-axis down here where y is negative 2. You got to make sure you label them still. Graphs extend the whole width of the graph. So our second question there, they want to know which of the following represents the equation of the graph shown below. So I look at this graph, I see it's a horizontal line. So I know automatically it's got to be a y equals a number. So it can't be choice 1, can't be choice 2, can't be choice 3. So therefore it was choice 4. Then our last one's here. They graph for us x equals 4. Vertical line goes through the x-axis where x is 4. They want us to graph and label x equals 2 and x equals negative 3. So when you go to graph these, you want to label them as being vertical since you can't use a table of values or you can't use an M and B. I mean, well, you could do a table of values, but it's not always easy. So our x equals 2 is a vertical line going through 2 on your x-axis. Negative 3 goes through negative 3 on your x-axis. So going through these right now, you guys are probably like, oh, this is not so bad. But later on, like in a couple of days, when I throw a vertical horizontal review problem on your homework, you're going to be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. They're really, they're... Gotta remember, those are your special case lines. 